Hello everyone. Hope you all are doing good. So this video mainly focuses on uh, staining techniques and the culture media used for the bacteria. So as you all know, when it comes to staining techniques, the gram staining is the most commonly used for differentiating the large group of bacteria that is gram positive and gram negative. So here the procedure is important to know. So there are the four steps present in gram staining. That is application of the crystal violet, which is the first step. That is primary stain. So crystal violet is a purple dye which is used. And the second step in gram staining is application of iodine, which acts like a mordant. That means fixing the primary stain. So it fixes the primary stain. And after the application of primary stain that is crystal violet and the secondary step that is application of iodine, the alcohol wash is done which acts as a de-staining procedure that is decolorization. And the last step is application of counter stain that is saffronin which is pink in color. So the summary is the bacteria which retains the primary stain that is the crystal violet are considered to be gram positive bacteria and the bacteria which loses the primary stain and takes up the counter stain is gram negative bacteria so here you can see in the bottom of the slide the view of gram positive and gram negative bacteria on the microscopic slide so the bacteria which retains the primary stain color that is purple that is crystal violet is considered to be gram positive whereas the bacteria which is pink in color which takes up saffron and is gram negative bacteria so the reason for gram positive bacteria which doesn't get decolorized is the thick peptidoglycan layer so that the thick peptidoglycan layer makes it retain the primary stain that is crystal violet so that it appears purple or blue in color whereas the gram negative bacteria does not have thick peptidoglycan layer it loses the primary stain and takes up the counter stain that is saffronin so these are the examples of gram positive bacteria only so this is the mnemonic for gram positive bacteria that is strange stephys act list entered my new carry bag is the mnemonic for remembering gram positive bacteria examples so the bold letters that is dark black letters represent the bacteria so strange for streptococcus staphy staphylococcus act for actinomyces list for listeria entered that is enterococcus my for mycobacteria new for pneumococcus carry for corani bacterium and bag for bacillus so strange stephys act list entered my new carry bag is a mnemonic for gram positive bacteria moving on to the other staining technique that is acid fast staining also called as zeal nielsen staining procedure so in this it is also included with four steps that is application of primary stain that is carbon first stain and instead of using iodine here the slide is heated which acts like a mordant that is fixative so application of heat is a differentiating step between gram staining and acid first and the third is the same that is application of acid alcohol which acts as a decal razor and the final is application of methylene blue that is counter stain so acid fast bacteria are mainly done for mycobacterium the reason for that is because of the presence of mycolic acids in the cell wall so high amount of mycolic acids present in the cell wall so that's why gram staining is not preferred for mycobacterium acid fast staining is preferred so the summary of this staining technique is the acid fast bacteria because of the presence of high mycolic acids they do not get decolorized they appear bright red in color whereas the non-acid fast bacteria 
takes up the counter stain that is methylene blue. So here is a clear picture of gram positive, gram negative and acid fast bacteria. So here you can see gram positive bacteria has a thick peptidoglycan layer. Whereas gram negative bacteria has thin peptidoglycan layer and the important feature of gram negative bacteria is presence of outer membrane. And acid fast bacteria you can see presence of high mycolic acid content. Coming to the bacterial growth curve, many questions are asked regarding this growth curve. So there are four phases in bacterial growth curve that is lag phase, logarithmic phase, stationary phase and death phase. So the important events occurring in these phases are very important. So the events that are occurring in the first phase that is lag phase are adaptation of the bacteria to this environment and the maximum cell size is attained by the bacteria by the end of this lag, log, lag phase. Whereas the second phase that is logarithmic phase is also called as exponential phase. Here the cells are stained uniformly and the bactericidal drugs are more active in this logarithmic phase. The third phase is stationary phase because there is zero growth rate and the important feature that happens here is the sporulation. And the final phase is the death phase that is the phase of decline and the involution forms are more common in this death phase. So please remember lag phase, logarithmic phase also called as exponential phase stationary phase also called as zero growth rate phase and death phase also called as phase of decline. Moving on to the culture media. So culture media you need to remember the media name and the bacteria example. So the main uses of culture media is the primary use is to identify the bacteria that is cause of infection from a given clinical sample so if you identify the perfect bacteria given in the clinical sample the clinician can suggest the proper drug against it so that the proper treatment can be given and it is also used to study the characteristics and the properties of the microorganisms and last but not least is to prepare biological products like vaccines so these are the three types of culture media it can be either solid liquid or semi-solid please remember solid consists of agar so if you add two percent of agar to the culture media it is considered to be a solid media if there is no agar in the medium it is considered to be liquid medium and if there is a less concentration of agar, like 0.2 to 0.5, it is semi-solid. So whenever there is agar mentioned in the given culture media, that means it is solid in nature. Whenever there is broth mentioned, it is liquid in nature. And there are aerobic and anaerobic media also. Aerobic media is for the bacteria which can easily grow in the presence of oxygen. Whereas anaerobic media which cannot be grown in the presence of oxygen. The examples of anaerobic media are commonly asked. That is Robertson cooked meat broth and thioglycolate medium. Coming to the classification. So culture media classified into simple, complex and synthetic media so simple media the examples of simple media are nutrient broth or nutrient agar so nutrient agar is nothing but agar added to nutrient broth so two percent of agar added to nutrient broth makes it nutrient agar apart from simple media they are synthetic and complex media so you need to know the difference between synthetic and complex synthetic media contain ingredients for which complete chemical formula is known 
that is example is if peptone water is used as a media it is considered as synthetic media because complete chemical formula is known it consists of 1% peptone 0.5% sodium chloride in water whereas complex media the chemical formula is not perfectly known such as milk egg malt and animal tissues are added so perfect chemical composition is not known in complex media whereas synthetic media also called as defined media the chemical composition of every component is well known so we'll discuss about different complex media which are very very important regarding neat so the first one is enriched media so here you can remember enriched the d stands for solid so enriched media is solid in nature so as i told you the examples of solid media should contain agar so whichever media consists of agar in it mostly come under enriched media so blood agar chocolate agar and low flour serum slop comes under enriched media that is solid in nature so difference between blood agar and chocolate agar so the appearance can be seen here so blood agar consists of mammalian blood chocolate agar also contain red blood cells that have been lysed by slow heating to 80 degrees celsius so blood agar is mo mostly used to detect the hemolytic pattern of the bacteria very very important so blood agar is a agar used for detecting fastidious organisms or to isolate them and to detect the hemolytic pattern of the bacteria so this is the hemolysis pattern so there are three types of hemolytic pattern you can see beta hemolysis alpha hemolysis and gamma hemolysis in the diagram you can see beta hemolysis means complete lysis of the red blood cells whereas alpha hemolysis is partial lysis of the red blood cells whereas gamma hemolysis you can see there is no lysis of red blood cells so alpha hemolysis you can see there is partial hemo hemolysis the greenish colonies are seen in alpha hemolysis so that is the point to be noted so beta hemolysis is complete hemolysis alpha is partial hemolysis and gamma is no hemolysis so these are the examples of different hemolytic pattern beta hemolysis is streptococcus pyogenes alpha is e coli and gamma that is no hemolysis is staphylococcus epidermis moving on to the second complex media that is enrichment media so enriched media is solid in nature whereas enrichment media is liquid in nature so it is also called as liquid selective media so as i told you if it consists of broth the, if the example consists of broth in the name it is considered to be liquid in nature so enrichment media is nothing but liquid in nature the examples are tetrathionate broth which is mainly for salmonella selenite f broth which is for salmonella and shigella whereas alkaline peptone water is for vibria so there are the three examples of enrichment media so blood agar chocolate agar low flour serum slope are examples of enriched media which are solid in nature whereas tetrathionate broth selenite f broth and alkaline pepto water are examples of enrichment media which are liquid in nature the third is selective media so enrichment media is also a type of selective media but liquid in nature whereas selective media is solid in nature so the examples of selective media is thiosulfate citrate bile salt sucrose agar that is tcbs for vibrio levenstein's jensen's media for mycobacterium tuberculosis so 
in selective media there is a substance that is added to slow down the growth of specific bacteria and only the bacteria that is tend to grow is grown that is in tcbs it enhances the growth of vibrio whereas in lj media that is levanshin jensen media malachite green dye which is present avoids the growth of other bacteria and enhances the growth of mycobacterium tuberculosis and the other example of selective media is thayer martin medium apart from tcbs and lj media thayer martin medium also included under selective media so thayer martin media is nothing but as you can see in the diagram it is a chocolate agar with added vancomycin and nystatin that is antibacterial so nisseria is an example for thayer martin medium so nisseria is grown on thayer martin medium moving on to the indicator media so the name itself suggests the media contains an indicator that is color indicator which changes in color when the bacteria grow in them so the examples of indicator media is wilson blair medium and mcloids medium so here you can see in the diagram the wilson blair medium because of the growth of the bacteria the sulfite is converted into sulfide that is black metallic colonies so because of the growth of salmonella typhi the sulfite is converted into sulfide so wilson and blair medium is for salmonella typhi whereas mcloids medium for corony bacterium diphtheria so here the potassium telluride is reduced to metallic tellurium so whenever there is a change in color it is considered to be indicator media so salmonella typhi is indicated by growth of black color black color colonies in wilson and blair medium whereas corony bacterium diphtheria in mcloids medium and differential medium so it is used to distinguish between the bacteria that is lactose fermenting or non lactose fermenter so mekonki sagar is an example for differential medium so here you can see the lactose fermenting bacteria appears pink in color whereas non lactose fermenters appears colorless and the final culture media is transport medium so it is used to transport the organism from the lab from the collecting area so the examples of transport medium is carry blair for salmonella shigella and vibrio whereas stewart's medium for transportation of gonococci so it is used to preserve the particular type of bacteria and also prevents the growth of unwanted bacteria during the transport from the collecting area to the laboratory so the examples are clary blair and stewards clary blair for salmonella shigella and vibrio whereas stewards medium for gonococci and there are specific media for fu fungal growth the main and most commonly used is saboros glucose agar or saborods dextrose agar and inhibitory mold agar these two are important for the growth of fungus most commonly asked question is saborods dextrose agar or saborods glucose agar they are related to the fungal growth 